tragedy on the cliff of death. I'm not gonna stop until we have the truth of what happened to Lauren. Lauren Agee's distraught family still struggling for the truth about how she died. I definitely don't think that we have heard the 100% truth of what happened. There are far too many questions and concerns. The 21-year-old went to the all-weekend party called Wakefest in Tennessee and never returned home. The official report says Lauren died of blunt force trauma from falling off a steep cliff into the lake and possibly drowned. But her mother, Sherry, thinks otherwise. How do you drown without water in your lungs? That is kind of fishy, isn't it? It doesn't make sense to me. Theoretically, you can drown without water in the lungs. It's called dry drowning. Getting nowhere with the sheriff, Lauren's family hired private investigator Sheila Wysocki to conduct her own inquiry. And she says what she discovered could blow this closed case wide open. The authorities say that Lauren's death was an accidental drowning. What do you say? I do not believe it was an accidental drowning. I believe that there was foul play and Lauren was placed where she was found. I think Lauren was dead before she was placed in the water. Why do you say that? Because of her injuries. When you look at the cliff and you're there, there are two possibilities. She fell off one side, which is a 90-foot drop, or she went off the other side, and there is no way her injuries added up to what's on her body. So if she was without her shoes, the bottom of her feet would be torn up like meat. There's just one little injury on there. The bruising in her back does show that she fell, but it doesn't show that she fell off the cliff. She probably fell off the ledge to another ledge. So to test that theory, Sheila performed what she calls an unscientific yet dramatic test. Chris Yarchuk did a similar test for our Fox affiliate in Nashville, tossing a dummy the size of Lauren off the cliff from several spots surrounding the campsite. You can't get to the water. Reporter Dennis Ferrier was there to witness every attempt. Carl Lewis couldn't get to the water. And the best long jumper in the world could not make it to the water. You would be tied up in trees and rocks. Between Yarchuk and Sheila, they tried the dummy test close to 50 times with the same results. We dropped it and we took it to different areas to see if it could hit the bottom of the cliff. And what did you find out? It couldn't, it didn't, it never did. When you fall, you have arms and legs. You don't roll like a ball. So there are arms flailing, legs flailing. There's no way she would have hit the water. There's no way she did hit the water. Then Sheila says she used a milk jug to track the currents in the lake. What we know from witnesses and um, science that the currents were going the opposite direction that day. So she wouldn't have ended up in that cove. The currents were going the wrong way. If they were going the opposite way, then would she have ended up somewhere else then? She would have ended up by the marina. To demonstrate her theory, Sheila took me out on a pontoon boat. This is where they were camping. That cove over there, the furthest cove, is where she was found. From above, you can see the layout. Here's the campsite. This is the cove, 700 feet away, where Lauren's body was found, and the marina is on the other side of this sliver of land. Sheila says if Lauren fell into the water, the current would have pushed her away from the cove toward the marina. The current was being pulled this way because the dam and the water, so it was coming the opposite direction. And something else irks Sheila. The medical examiner never did a rape kit on Lauren. Is that unusual? I believe it was. The sheriff said she had a tampon in so she couldn't be sexually assaulted, which infuriates me. Why does it infuriate you? You can be raped with a tampon in. And remember that mysterious triangle mark on Lauren's chest and stomach? 
Some say it looks like an indentation from the bow of a canoe. After going through Lauren's case file, we had some questions for the sheriff's department, but they declined our request for an interview. Instead, the sheriff issued this statement. The Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency assisted the sheriff's department detectives in loading the body onto a TWRA boat to transport the body back to the boat ramp. Our investigation determined this mark is an identical match to the TWRA boat storage locker lid where the body was placed face down during transport to the boat ramp. Now the sheriff said that that imprint on the stomach was from the rescue boat that was used to recover her body. You see a boat with a cooler, you see a boat with a trap door, it's a box which is square, 90 degree corners. This was a 45 degree. Angles, steep drops, a body face down. For the family, nothing seems to add up. Next. What can you tell me about what happened? We look for answers from the people believed to be the last to see Lauren alive. When we filed the wrongful death lawsuit, and we have a list of questions, they all pled the fifth. OK, come on. No. I mean, you plead the fifth. You plead the fifth because you are afraid of incriminating yourself. It's not a hard question. Did you physically touch or harm Lauren?